Good morning. It's good to see everyone out this morning. We receive from the Lord's Word and Sacrament. If you have your announcement sheet, I ask you to please take that out. As you are so doing, please fill out the blue book at the end of the pew and pass it on down and uh, return it back to its spot. Uh, as we look to the announcement sheet for this week, a couple brief things to mention to you. Thursday, we have our worship committee meeting. <clears throat> excuse me, worship committee meeting at 1.30. If anyone's interested in helping pick out the uh, hymns of the church, that can happen on Thursday at 1.30. There's also Ascension Divine Service here at the church. That is a joint service with our uh, brothers and sisters at uh, St. Mark, Mark's Lutheran Church. And so that'll be at 7 o'clock here on Thursday. The youth will be having a year-end confirmation lock-in as well, so keep that in mind on Friday. There's some announcements on the back of the sheet. I believe there's also cookies for sale in the hallway, too, so help yourself to that uh, before you leave. Are there any other things that need to be mentioned at this time that I may have overlooked? A very blessed, happy Mother's Day to each of you moms here this morning, so a blessing to you this morning as well. Well, this morning we are the sixth Sunday after Easter, and we encounter a text from the book of Numbers as well as James. Numbers talks about us looking up essentially to the cross of Christ. James talks us about talks to us about hearing. We're going to hear more from the book of James this morning as well. But before we do so, our opening hymn of invocation is hymn number 837, hymn number 837.
ask the congregation to please stand as we turn to 151. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a call and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the intro. It's printed on the inside of your bulletin, sung to the tune of C. The voice of singing declares this with a shout of joy to the ends of the earth. Alleluia. The Lord has redeemed his servant Jacob. Alleluia. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. I cry to him. was on my tongue, but truly God has listened. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be he, God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. With a voice of singing, declare this with a shout of joy to the ends of the earth. Amen. The Lord has redeemed his servant Jacob. Alleluia. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for salvation let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth.
Let us pray. O God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration, grant that we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding, accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the sixth Sunday of Easter is from Numbers chapter 21. From Mount Hor, they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became impatient on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water. And we loathe this worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. And they bit the people. So that many people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he may take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole. And everyone who is bitten, when he sees it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. And if a serpent bit anyone... He would look at the bronze serpent and live. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from James chapter 1. But be doers of the word and not only hearers, deceiving yourselves. For if if, if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away And at once forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction, and to keep oneself unstrained, unstained from the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 16th chapter. Jesus said, In that day you will ask nothing of me. Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive, that your joy may be full. I have said these things to you in figures of speech. The hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figures of speech, but will tell you plainly about the Father. In that day, you will ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I will ask the Father on your behalf, for the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and have come into the world, and now I am leaving the world and going to the Father." His disciples said, Ah, now you are speaking plainly and not using figures of speech, figurative speech. Now we know that you know all things and do not need anyone to question you. This is why we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Behold, the hour is coming. Indeed, it has come when you will be scattered, each to his own home, and will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We continue with our hymn of the day, hymn number 766, hymn number 766.
in the name of Jesus. Amen. Perhaps, yes, perhaps, perhaps we Missouri Synod Lutherans are justified in condemning the garbage from most pulpits these days. The garbage coming out of most pulpits in America these days. On the one hand, pick any liberal mainline church denominations. Think of, well, yes, think of ELCA, Methodist, Episcopal, Presbyterian, USA. Take your pick. And there will be a very good chance you will hear some kind of sermon on social justice, some kind of sermon on gender ideology or diversity. Tragically, tragically in these churches, there's not much difference between the messages coming out of these pulpits and what you hear on liberal television networks at night. On the other hand, take your pick of any American evangelical church in America right now, there will be a good chance that you will hear some kind of sermon on better tips to live a successful life. Or worse yet, sermons on better sex, sermons on better finances and more well-behaved kids. Tragically, again, there's not much difference in the pulpits of these churches when compared to Dr. Phil on the morning. As one Missouri Senate district president once lamented, a DP once lamented, he said this, In America right now, in the American church, we have a, get this, we have a famine of the word of God. We have a famine. And so for the most part, we Missouri Senate Lutherans can lament about this famine of the word in America, while at the same time priding ourselves that most of our churches are teaching correctly. However, it must be noted that good teaching is only one half of the equation, one half of the issue. In other words, while it is important to condemn loose teaching, we would say, and loose preaching, we must also condemn loose hearing. In a reading from the epistle of James, James addresses the problem to each and every one of us this morning, the problem of loose hearing. He condemns you and me for, get this, for letting that word go in one ear and out the other. But we do not do this, do we? We don't do this at all. We sure do. We certainly do. Dear friends, how many times have you read the liturgy? How many times have you read the liturgy, heard the prayers of the church, and sung the hymns, and then two minutes later, you have no idea. Two minutes later, you have no idea what you just spoke, what you just sung, what you just prayed for. How many times do you find yourself moving your mouths in the divine service while thinking about well, that upcoming Vikings game, or perhaps your upcoming work week, or that conversation you had with a friend before service. Or, how often do you look at someone else in the pew and compare them, compare yourself to them, or perhaps make a silent judgment about the way that they look while saying that creed at the same time? We pastors, we have a saying, and that is this. When you are tired, just read the black and do the red. Yes, read the black, do the red. In other words, to lead a divine service for us pastors, all the pastor has to do is open his liturgical book and read the black words and do what the red words say. Say this, do this. And so we pastors, get this, we pastors are just as guilty as parishioners of loose hearing as well. Just reading the black, doing the red. And so, my friends, this morning, it looks like pastors and parishioners alike are guilty, we're all guilty, of forgetful and vain hearing. Our ears are loose. Our ears are lazy. But this is where you and I must be very careful. You see, too often when pastors and parishioners struggle with the sin, the sin of loose hearing, instead of repenting of our sluggish and lazy ears, well, we put the blame on the message. We put the blame on that which is spoken and sung. We say this. Well, you know, if we didn't have that rote and repetitive liturgy, perhaps if we could change things up a little bit, well, I perhaps might listen even more. If the music was a little more upbeat and not so dirgy, I would remember the meaning of the song a little bit more. It would stick with me. If the pastor, well, if the pastor was more relational and the sermons were more entertaining, I would be less drowsy. I would fall asleep less during the sermon. You see, just like a lazy employee blaming a boss for getting fired, 
while we too will blame the message for our lazy, will blame the message itself for our lazy and slothful ears. We'll blame the message itself rather than addressing our ears. And unfortunately, without even realizing it, we, the Lutheran Church Missouri Senate, can change our services and change our sermons to accommodate lazy and slothful ears rather than, again, confronting our lazy and slothful ears themselves. Mark this. Mark this. In the end, if we do not confront these lazy and slothful ears, if we do not confront these lazy and slothful ears, but accommodate these lazy ears, we are no different than churches that withhold the word of God from their churches, from their parishioners. Lord, have mercy. Indeed. Lord, have mercy. Indeed. Dear friends, the problem is twofold. The church must preach and teach the word when it is popular and when it is not. The word is to be preached with intensity, with simplicity, with faithfulness, even when people will have no stomach for solid teaching, but instead will want to fill up on spiritual junk food. And at the same time, we the church, we have ears. And these ears need to listen. They need to hear. Because if we don't listen, well, the word will go in one ear and out the other, resulting in the devil coming along and snatching up, sweeping away that word of God to keep it away from our heart. And then, right there, we'll be just as famished as any other person in any other ELCA church or any of those other churches. We will be famished as well. No better off. Please hear this loud and clear. A slothful, lazy, and deaf church is no better off in a heretical speaking church. We are both experiencing famine alike. Famine of the word. Baptized saints, keep in mind though, you have ears. You who have ears, listen. You see, you come into this sanctuary today. All of you are here. You're sitting in the pews. You have come into the sanctuary Not to get just a mere pep talk. We must be frank. We must be real on this. You come to the sanctuary not to just get a mere pep talk. You're not even in the sanctuary to be entertained with stories from this pulpit. In fact, if you need entertainment, you're better off going to a movie than coming into the sanctuary itself. And if you need a bit of a pep talk with life hacks, well, it's a whole lot easier just to go search on YouTube for a seven-minute video to find yesterday's life tip. But rather... Keep in mind, you are here in this sanctuary to hear the word of God. And the word of God is not just any kind of word. Keep in mind that the very world itself, that this very world itself, the world that we live in, along with all of the stars, with all the planets, with all the black holes, with everything in the vast expanse of this world and universe itself, was created not by some cosmic collision of particles, but it was created, get this, by the spoken word. God spoke. Out of nothing, something was created. Also, that very same word that spoke the world into existence, that very same word put on human flesh, and that human flesh, Jesus Christ, spoke to wind and waves, and get this, they obeyed. And that same word that created the world, that same word that actually commands authority over nature itself, that very same word comes and speaks to death and disease And demons themselves, and they shudder, they listen, they bow. And that same word that created the world, that same word that spoke this world in existence, that spoke against wind and waves and spoke against disease and death and demons, is also spoken to you right here in this sanctuary for you. The word is alive, it is active, it is in his holy church. So this begs the question, why do you not listen to the word? Why do you and I let this word go in one ear and out the other? Why do we so quickly forget this word or not value the word of God? Well, the answer is simple. It hurts, but it's simple. We have loose ears. We have lazy ears. We have ears that are slothful. And so, dear friends, it is clear this morning that you and I, well, we must repent Repent of hearing the word of God and then two minutes later having no idea what was said. 
We must repent of our dull minds, our lazy, lethargic, apathetic, sleepy ears. Furthermore, we are all here to repent of believing that what we hear from the liturgy, from the readings, from the sermon, is some sort of flimsy and weak religious-sounding sentiment. It is certainly not. It's certainly not. Baptized saints, you who have ears, listen up. You're not in the sanctuary for your ears to hear some plastic and empty religious-sounding garbage to make you feel warm and fuzzy, but instead you are in the sanctuary because you have ears that need to hear the Word of God, and the Word of God needs to be poured into those ears. That Word that created this world, the Word itself that sustains this world, needs to be spoken into you because you are Christians, and Christians listen. They listen to Jesus. You are in the sanctuary so that you can hear beyond all reasonable doubt that your Jesus was crucified, that he was dead and buried and resurrected for you. You are in the sanctuary so that you can hear, despite what you feel from your guilty conscience, that your sins are truly forgiven for Christ's sake. You are forgiven. You are in the sanctuary so that you can hear, despite the aches and pains of your dying body, that you will be resurrected someday. At the great eschaton, the great last day, Christ will call out to you in your graves and you will hear and you will come forth unto the resurrection and new life. Baptized saints, you are here in the sanctuary so that the word of God can deliver truth into your ears, not falsehood, not pious sounding sentiments, but truth itself into your ears that defines reality for you amid a very confused world that we find ourselves in. Baptized saints, those With lazy ears, do not abide in the word. They do not know the truth, and they're not set free. But you, yes, you, who hear the word, you have Jesus. Where you have the word, you have Jesus. Where you have Jesus, you have the word. Where you have Christians, you have Christians hearing Jesus. Hear Christ and his truth. Because when you have Jesus through the word, you have truth poured into your ears, truth that will set you free, that does set you free in this world of deception, free from the condemnation of sin, free from the lies of the devil, free unto Christ. And so today we pray together, Lord God, create in us a clean heart and also give us ears to hear. Yes, give us ears to hear. Lord God, implant your word of truth in us. Break the silence of our deafness. Give our dull minds understanding and set us free in you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Amen. As the congregation, please stand with one heart and one voice. Let us confess the faith as expressed in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, you have redeemed your servant Jacob and you gather your church Help us, to, help us to declare and proclaim and utter this great salvation in speech and song to the very ends of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all, bless our nations and its citizens. Give us good leaders, satisfying work, loving families, and a peaceful and quiet life that glorifies your name. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you are the author of life and the great physician. According to your perfect will, grant health to those who are ill. Give grace to the grieving and dying in their hour of need. We pray especially this morning for Answer and Becky, Brian, Kari, Carl, Charlotte, Cindy, Connie, Dorothy, Elaine, Fern, Hallie, Hayden, Jeff, Joellen, Joyce, Callie, Kim, 
Marilyn, Mark, Philip, Randy, Roger, Ruth, Sharon, Travis, Wayne, and Phyllis. We also pray for the William Erden family as they mourn the passing of Kennedy. We also pray that you be with Alan in his time of need this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you tied your word to the bronze serpent, promising that whoever looked upon it would live. In the New Testament, you have tied your word of promise to water, bread, and wine, that whoever receives these in faith receives the forgiveness of their sins. Teach us to love and cherish your humble means of grace, remembering our baptism and receiving your supper often. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have attended to the voice of our prayers, for you have commanded us to pray and have promised to hear us. Let your mercy comfort and sustain us in prayer that we may heartily and fervently pray to, to you at all times and at all places, not doubting, but trusting in your promise. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated for the offering. As a way of reminder, the offering plate is in the back of the sanctuary. Offerings can be mailed to the church office or conducted through the church website online. Congregation is asked to please stand as we sing the offertory on 781. As we continue to the service of the sacrament, we continue in repentance and faith to receive the gifts the Lord has for us in his body and blood given and shed for us. 
If you're not a member of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Senate, or one of our sister denominations, we do still invite you to please come forward, kneel at the rail, and cross your arms to receive a blessing this morning. If you'd like to partake of this wonderful gift to the altar, please talk to me after the service about membership here at St. Paul's. We continue on 160. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times, at all places, give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, and most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks... He gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is a New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Ask the congregation to please stand as we thank the Lord on page 164. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may together with all of your saints celebrate with the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with with favor and give you peace. Maybe see for departing him, hymn number 917. As we hear in the Gospels over and over and over, Jesus says, you who have ears, hear. And we are called to hear because the Lord not only has a word to reveal to us about our sin, the judgment of the devil, but also the forgiveness of sins, to hear that we are in Christ, that you're forgiven, that you belong to him, that you've been snatched from darkness unto light. 
Go with ears open today, knowing and hearing and having assurance that you belong to Jesus. Amen. Thank you.